give you a little bit of an overview of uh, cancer the way that I see it. <clears throat> Just a little bit on my background. I'm a medical doctor trained at the University of Texas, Houston. I uh, did internship and residency in cardiology and critical care fellowships in St. Louis. Board certified internal medicine cardiology, studying alternative and integrative medicine since 1975. Practicing and teaching integrative medicine since 1986. Consultant to Nutramedics Florida. Chairman of the Medical Advisory Board for the Global Wellness Care Centers. Chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board for the Academy of Comprehensive Integrative Medicine out of Panama. This is the so-called standard of care in this country for cancer. It's surgery, radiation, and chemo, and occasionally now a little bit of uh, immune modulation. In 2004, three board-certified oncologists from, from Australia published a meta-analysis in clinical oncology, and they found that if you added, oops, sorry, if you added in uh, chemotherapy to the patient's care for, for all stages, that you increase the five-year survival rate about 2%, from 60% to 62%. Now, if you took out the patients that had Hodgkin's lymphoma, which had pretty good response to chemo, and the patients that have testicular carcinoma, then it went down to 1.7%. If you take out the patients with stage 1 and stage 2 cancer, then it goes down to less than half a percent increase in survival by adding chemotherapy in. So we, we go through all that pain and suffering and anywhere from $300,000 to $500,000 worth of expense to get a half a percent increase in our survival if we have advanced cancer. Not a good plan. So the history of, of integrative oncology. <clears throat> William Coley in, in 1890 cured cancer by injecting bacterial endotoxins. He discovered this inadvertently because one of his patients with advanced cancer got a streptococcal infection in the hospital, almost died from the streptococcal infection, had raging fevers for days. When she recovered, the cancer went away. So he went to the laboratory and got the bacteria that grew out of her and started injecting it into any patient that wanted to try to survive cancer that was destined to die. And a lot of them survived. John Beard in 1911 cured cancer with pancreatic enzymes. He was an embryologist, but he worked with a cancer surgeon who had patients who were de destined to die, and they gave him pancreatic enzymes, and a lot of them survived. They were given pancreatic enzymes intravenously. William Koch in the 1920s to 1940s cured cancer with intramuscular injection of homeopathics, Koch's remedy. His thanks for, for, for developing that was to get kicked off the medical board, uh, off the uh, hospital staff, have his license removed, get run out of the state, and run out of the country. Thank you, thank you very much, right? Otto Warburg won a Nobel Prize in 1931 for finding the cause of cancer. And we're still looking for the cause of cancer now? Something wrong with that picture. Royal Rife, 1934 killed the pleomorphic microbes that were in the patients that had cancer and cured 16 consecutive cases of breast cancer in three months' time just by getting rid of the bugs that caused the cancer. If you haven't read the, the work of A.V. Costantini from Italy, that's a really valuable read. If you haven't read The Cancer Microbe by Ellen Cantwell, it's a very valuable read. Max Gerson, 1948 to 78, cured cancer with diet and thyroid pills. Joseph Issels, 1950s, cured cancer with biological medicine and dentistry. I interviewed Dr. Issels in 1996 as I was writing Alternative Medicine Definitive Guide to Cancer, 1,100 pages, 2,000 peer-reviewed references. Dr. Issels said that in order to get into his clinic in the 1950s, that you had to have a letter from your oncologist saying, there is no hope for you, go home and die. Okay. He said, would you like to talk to some of those patients? I said, you have some of them still alive? He said, I have hundreds of those still alive. He said, most of them outlive their oncologist. <laughs> uh, so, so I spoke to one in Germany, and this man in Germany said that when he came to see Dr. Issels 40 years earlier, he had, the tumor, had a tumor the size of a grapefruit in his abdomen, and 40 years later when I was talking to him, he still had a tumor 
the size of a grapefruit in his abdomen. He had lived peaceably with that tumor for 40 years. In this country, oncologists decide that they're going to have to kill the tumor, destroy the tumor at any cost, even if it costs the patient their life. But Dr. Issels was, was wiser. He said, let's take care of the patient, and the tumor will take care of itself. Reinhold Voll, 1950s, cured cancer with uh, electronormal screening, homeopathics, and biological dentistry. William Donald Kelly, 1960s, cured cancer with metabolic diet and, in, and uh, pancreatic enzymes. He had uh, pancreatic cancer himself, metastatic to his liver. His doctor said, you have two months to live. He said, I don't think so. <laughs> he went to the library, found an article from Dr. Beard back in 1910, 1911, started himself on high doses of pancreatic enzymes, improved his diet, and got rid of cancer. Then he started, he was a dentist. He started treating other people in his practice because he is a good-hearted guy. Anybody that came to him saying, you know, can you help me with my cancer? He did that. And his thanks was he got attacked by the Texas Medical Board, dri driven to insanity, and ended up uh, uh, being in, uh, in an institution for quite some years. Finally died uh, an unrecognized man in Kansas a few years ago. Dr. Dimitrios, study priorities, cured cancer with intravenous glucose, potassium, and insulin, and magnets. A patient with cancer has a lower transmembrane electrical potential in every cancer cell. If you can restore that electrical charge across the cell membrane, the cancer cell theoretically can become normal again. The way you do that is to drive potassium into the cell. How do you get potassium to go into the cell? You get potassium along with glucose and insulin, and it drives the potassium into the cell. The magnets just direct the, can direct the uh, therapy where you want it to go in the body. The, magnets, the, the, the negative pole of a magnet will dilate the blood vessels in the area so that more of that therapy comes to that place than any other place. Dr. Reiki Heimer in the 1980s cured cancer by resolving emotions. 6,000 patients had a five-year survival rate of 92% with only asking the right question. This is stage three and stage four cancers predominantly. So asking the right question can give the patient an aha moment and all of a sudden the cancer just goes away. He cured himself and his wife first after their son died tragically from a gunshot wound. And when he figured out that he could resolve cancer just by asking the right question, that's what he did exclusively after that. He, uh, he, he wrote that research up. Uh, he published that uh, in the uh, University of Tübingen uh, journal. The, the university was required by law to re replicate his research or refute it. They did neither. So he spoke out about that to the public. And he was arrested for inciting the public against the medical establishment. Okay. Now he's in exile in another country. Dr. Von Ardina, in the 1980s, a student of Otto Warburg, cured cancer by exercise with oxygen therapy. 18 days of, of, of daily exercise, two hours a day, with oxygen, resulted in a significant percentage of those patients going into remission. Last polling in the 1978 to 90th time frame with Dr. Abram Hoffer out of Canada uh, gave patients high dose oral vitamin C to bowel tolerance and had a 12 fold increase in longevity compared to the group that did not get vitamin C. So, if we have all of these things that individually have a benefit, why don't we put a few of them together? Makes sense. You have to know which ones to put together, but you could get more powerful effects with combinations all the time than you can with uh, individual. So here's my, uh, my philosophy now as far as treating uh, cancer. Always look for and resolve the mental emotional conflicts. I use recall healing, evox, and more recently is the self-awareness formula from Scogna. Now if you combine all three of those together, and by the way Dr. Kessler and Bicchetti up here on the front row can tell you how to do this self-awareness formula. Uh, we'll have an exhibitor here that can tell you how to do the EVOX. Okay, so there's, these are tools that, that every practitioner should have in their toolbox if they're going to be serious about treating cancer. Oh, by the way, since I'm a board-certified cardiologist and not an oncologist, I always tell the patients that have cancer, I'm not an oncologist. I'm going to treat you, the patient, not the cancer. If the cancer happens to go away, it won't be my fault. Okay? I always encourage patients to pray. And if they get well, we blame it on God. Okay, not on me. Okay. 
I believe that the, the diet is a huge piece, and Dr. McCall already alluded to that. And uh, again, it needs to be individualized because we're all uh, individual, we're not uh, you know cookie cookie cutters. We're we're very much individual. But uh, measuring the saliva pH is an important piece of, of following where that patient is in their in their dietary process. Saliva pH before a meal, without having drunk or eating eating eaten anything for some time before that. Uh, proteolytic enzymes between meals, very, very helpful. Uh, but I find that the that there needs to be a mixture of chymotrypsin and other pancreatic enzymes along with uh, plant-derived enzymes like uh, bromelain or papaya leaf enzyme. Because the, the, the uh, tissues that have cancer are very acidic and the pancreatic enzymes have a very narrow pH range that can't work very well in those tissues. But if you give bromelain, which works at a wide range of pHs, the bromelain will chew the fibrin off the surface of cancer cells, get rid of the cancer cells uh, by immune system attacking the cancer cells that now have been decloaked. The other, in value, the other value of the proteolytic enzymes is to strip the fibrin off the inner wall of the capillaries. If you have fibrin up against the capillary walls, you reduce the, the transport of oxygen from red cells into the tissues so you don't have enough oxygen getting the tissues and the tissues become starved of oxygen and set up a setup for cancer. Vitamin C to bowel tolerance if they don't have G6PD deficiency. Clean the environment up. Electromagnetic fields, geopathic fields, and chemicals. Dr. Von Ardina in Germany figured out that every patient that slept on a geopathic field long enough would always develop cancer. For some patients that was one year. For some patients that was 10 years. The geopathic fields are the magnetic radiations that emanate out of the earth above an underground water stream, fault in the earth, or underground influence called the Hartman grid. And if you are on top of one of those fields on your bed, you're going to get cancer eventually. So you need to find that out and get off of that. Electrodermal screening to guide the therapy that you do. Uh, the, the, most of the allopathic doctors that I know do, do what I call WAG medicine, wild ass guess medicine. Okay, but, uh, but if you use electrodermal screening or kinesiology, you can tell what the best therapy is for that patient before they get the first dose. Detoxify the patient, critically important. We're all toxic. Uh, oxygen therapies or oxidative therapies to kill the cancer, kill the cancer and to kill the cancer microbes. And by the way, a lot of the chemotherapeutic agents are working either as an antibiotic or as an, as an oxidant. So why do we have to use such toxic drugs when something less toxic will work? Resolve the dental issues, critically important. You know, we, uh, Kelly talked about that. And it's, it's all the dental issues, not some of the dental issues. You have to get all the amalgams out of the mouth. Uh, the mercury that it's uh, released into the saliva and into the air every time you chew is enough to, to suppress the immune system where you can't engulf <coughs> microbes or cancer cells. So it's very important to get the murk out, but the but the root get the root canal teeth out in most cases. Clean out the wisdom teeth sockets and other uh, other sockets where there's chronic infection. It's called NICO, N I C O, stands for neuralgia inducing cavitational osteonecrosis. If if you don't do something about that, the patient uh, doesn't survive. The best book on that is is uh, is from uh, George Meinig, M E I N I G, called uh, Root Canal Cover Up. He summarizes all the research from the 1920s up through uh, 1980, 80 something. Electromagnetic frequency therapy is very beneficial in, in grounding to the earth. And then a variety of miscellaneous specialty therapies. A lot of integrative doctors make the mistake of bypassing the first 10 steps and going straight to step 11. Not a good plan. You need to make sure you deal with the basics first. So this is uh, some research on the emotions. Breast cancer patients who entered support groups along with oncology care lived two times longer than those who did not attend a support group. Patients who received oncology care but did not attend a support group were dead within five years. So we need to be make sure we're doing something about the emotions. When, when those uh, patients that are in the support groups talk, they have aha moments. When they have the aha moment, they get the same effect as Dr. Reiki Hammer's work in Germany. So recall healing is the work of uh, Reiki Hammer and Dr. Claude Saban and others since them, all, uh, all put together in one uh, nice package. 
we have that on our academy website. Uh, so if you know, don't know about recall healing, at least take a one-hour course on that so you can understand what that is and then decide whether you want to do the, the, the four 13-hour courses to learn more detail. Amazing stuff, though. I already talked about his survival rate, 92% five-year survival rate. By the way, Dr. Joe Barry knows the one that taught me that. He now teaches in uh, Europe and in, in, uh, in Russia. And at the University of Moscow in Russia, recall healing is now a required course for the psychology students, not an elective. It'll be another decade at least before that happens in this country. Isn't that right, Jorge? <laughs> Long time. Okay, Re recall healing to aid the, uh, recall healing to aid the, the healing of the patient. Uh, I'm not going to go through that. There's too much, too much to talk about, too little time. The, the, the voice therapy, Evox. If you don't know about Evox, learn about Evox. In Evox, a patient speaks into a microphone as they're visualizing the face of a person or the event that has had an effect on their life. As they're speaking, it doesn't matter what words they speak because the machine's not recording their words, it's recording the frequencies that are embedded in their voice. So after speaking for only 15 seconds, all the emotions and all the beliefs that are attached to that person or that event are displayed on the computer screen. And then the device takes your own voice frequencies and makes them into a homeopathic homocord and delivers those frequencies back into your body through an electrode while you're listening to pleasant music and watching faintly flashing lights through your closed eyelids. You get a release of the, of the trapped emotions from your, from your tissues and from your brain in a very short period of time. But I've had uh, psychologists who are getting psychotherapy weekly, for one hour per week for 10 years, who went in and did one evox and came out and said, I got more benefit in the last hour than I've gotten from 10 years of psychotherapy. So it's powerful stuff. This is a patient with breast cancer, 44-year-old, uh, refused surgery. She had uh, uh, you know, a, a fairly large biopsy-proven intraductal carcinoma. Uh, she did electrodermal screening. Went, through, went on to the treatments that were, were indicated based on electronormal screening, moved her bed off the geopathic field, resolved the electromagnetic radiation in her house, got rid of the cordless phone, the, uh, the Wi-Fi, all that stuff. Uh, she took enzymes 30 minutes before food and uh, a, a vegetarian diet because that's what she tested for, and her saliva pH confirmed that that was a good choice for her. She took uh, vitamin C, Chinese herbs, homeopathics, did the emotional work, did some frequency therapies and myosins. So you see, how would you do a controlled clinical trial on this, right? It's like we're using a lot of different modalities. But tonight, last, last event of the day, we're going to talk about how you would do research on this. So make sure you come to that. That's our think tank, the last event of the day. Anyway, we reevaluated re her after a couple of months, and cancer was gone by energetic testing. And I told her, I think your cancer's gone. And uh, she said, well, I want to go back and tell my surgeon. I said, ooh, bad idea, bad idea. <laughs> she, just, she was insistent. So uh, she went back, and he intimidated her and said, there's no way the cancer could be gone. We're going to take your, you know, we need to take your breasts off. And so she went through uh, the mastectomy. They, they sent the, uh, the, the, the breast down to the pathology lab. They could not find a single live cancer cell in the breast, not one. Okay. She developed post-operative complications, ended up in the intensive care unit, almost died. Then after she came back post getting her breast taken off when she didn't need to, she had to go through a lot of psychological work. Thank you very much. Okay, so the diet. No sugars, very little starch. Uh, some patients with cancer can get away with meat, like uh, Kelly. There's the metabolic types that, that can do that. But if they do that, they need to take plant-based digestive enzymes with that meat meal because every patient with, hydro with, uh, with cancer has low hydrochloric acid in their stomach. I don't think I've ever seen one that didn't. So you have to take plant-derived plant enzymes because uh, the plant-derived enzymes don't have to have acid in order to act be activated. Lots of raw, organic, sprouted, fermented foods. Uh, there are some books about that. And this, the, you, If you don't know this, you can get these off of our academy website. All these PowerPoint slides are on the academy website for all of our speakers. So don't, don't be scrambling to, uh, to write down what's on the slides. Write down the stuff that's not on the slides. 
and Dr. Seifrey will be talking on Saturday <coughs> about the uh, the diet that uh, that he pioneered. And then Dr. McColl will, will speak after that. And Dr. And uh, Miriam Columbia, sitting up here on the front row, will talk about that. So we're going to have a, a, a lot of concentration on diet on Saturday. But gu guide your progress with saliva pH. You spit three times into the trash or the toilet. The fourth spit goes on the paper. You wait 10 seconds, read the color on the paper, compare it to the color wheel in the paper packet, and then write down that pH. The pH of the saliva should be 6.8 to 7.2. If it's below 6.8, you're acidic. Very few people that have cancer are, are alkaline. Most everybody's acidic. And if you're acidic, there's a lot of things you can do about that. Take proteolytic enzymes. Again, the work of William Donald Kelly, John Beard, Nicholas Gonzalez, and others. Uh, Wobenzyme has several million dollars worth of research behind it in Germany as a monotherapy for cancer. Works well. But it has bromelain and papain in it, and those are plant-based enzymes that don't they, that will work at uh, very low pHs in the tissues. Natokinase, lumbrokinase, serapeptase, or other enzymes that can be used. Oral vitamin C. Again, the work of, of Linus Pauling and Abram Hoffer. Twelve times longer living if you take the vitamin C than if you don't take the vitamin C to bowel tolerance. At the time they did this study, there was no genetically engineered corn vitamin C. Okay, now almost all the, the vitamin C is genetic from genetically engineered corn. That's a bad idea. So we need to find other sources of vitamin C. I use the uh, Nutramedics vitamin C uh, because it's derived from tapioca, not from corn. But there's uh, also cardiovascular research makes uh, tapioca derived vitamin C. Clean up the environment, reduce the uh, uh, the electromagnetic pollution, the low frequency stuff uh, from the wall circuit. Turn off the breakers that go to your bedroom at night. That's a simple thing to do. Reduce the high frequency EMF, uh, especially at night. Uh, turn off the Wi-Fi. Uh, make sure you never have a cordless phone in your house. How many of you have a cordless phone in your house? Okay. Do you have a death wish? <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> They're, 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 they're a lot worse than a cell phone tower next to your house or, or a, um, uh, a cell phone next to your bed. Get rid of the cordless phones. They're, they're an unnecessary convenience. Okay, take your shoes off at the door. Open the windows daily to get to aerate the house. Avoid pesticides and herbicides, especially in the home. Uh, use not, uh, only non-toxic cleaning agents. Don't put on your skin what you wouldn't eat. Have you read your skincare products, the label on there? If you can't pronounce it, don't put it on your skin because you're absorbing it. That's, that's toxic stuff. Clean the air with ch charcoal HEPA filters. Use solid core charcoal filters for your shower. And, and, uh, and do what I call military shower. Military shower, you wet your skin, you, la you uh, wet your washcloth, you wet your hair, you lather up your wash, you turn off the water, you lather up your washcloth, you Scrub off your body, you scrub your hair with, this, with shampoo, turn the water back on for about 30 seconds to rinse off. So the whole water exposure time is less than a minute. The Environmental Protection Agency in 2008 proved that every major city water supply has pharmaceutical drugs in it, chemical levels of pharmaceutical drugs. So when you take a shower, you're getting pharmaceutical drugs through your skin, among other things, pesticides, herbicides, solvents. You know, the water supply in Dallas has lots of of gasoline in it, so you definitely don't want to be drinking that stuff or putting it on your body. <clears throat> so short exposure of the, of the body to the skin, uh, through the skin. The, uh, if a person drinks tap water and bathes in tap water, 70% of the toxins that come into their body each day come in through their skin if they take an average length of shower. Okay, th this is an example of, of, of uh, electromagnetic fields inducing cancer. 40-year-old man and woman came for new patient evaluations. They both, both thought they were healthy. Uh, in those days, I was in, a, in the habit of doing a dark field microscopy as part of the routine examine, examination. And when I did that, I saw evidence of cancer on both of them on the dark field microscopy. I said, ooh, we need to look harder. So I did kinesiology on both of them in a de very detailed fashion. 
I found he had colon cancer in the sigmoid colon. I found she had a lymphoma in the retroperitoneum by energetic testing. I did, uh, he didn't want to have a colonoscopy, so we did a CEA blood test on him, which was very, very high. And uh, he had no smoking history, no other reason for the CEA to be elevated. Uh, I did a, uh, a nuclear spec gallium scan on the woman. She had clearly a lymphoma in the retroperitoneum that, uh, that the energetic testing showed. So I'm, I'm perplexed. You know, these are white collar workers, both happy with each other, happy with their kids, happy with their jobs. And I, I said, well, what, what's causing this cancer? I said, it must be electromagnetic fields. So I sent the, the uh, bow biologist to their house to take readings. And over their bed, it was 100 times the, the government standards for safe electromagnetic fields and 200 times my standards. So I had him uh, tell them to keep, to keep those. Uh, keep, and when, he, when they unplugged the TV at the foot of the bed and the, and the radio alarm clocks on either side of the bed, they unplugged those three appliances, the electromagnetic fields dropped almost to normal. So I said, keep those three appliances off and have them come back to the office next time there's an appointment. And uh, I'll check them again. When they came back without any other therapy, they were both free of cancer just by getting rid of the electromagnetic field. So, so that's a, uh, you know, that's a significant contributor to cancer that we're not often recognizing. Guide your therapy with electrodermal screening. As I said, don't, don't, uh, do, do any more WAG medicine. All right, Dr. Vole in Germany was the one that uh, started that in the 1950s, uh, but still it's not done in any U.S. hospitals because it usually shows pharmaceuticals are not a good idea. So it won't happen here. It won't happen here. So we have to do it outside the hospital setting. But a very high conductance is correlated with inflammation. Low conductance is correlated with organ, organ degeneration. And uh, if you put the right item in the circuit, the abnormal conductance normalizes. And uh, if you give that patient that item, that vitamin, that mineral, that herb, that homeopathic, then they usually get an improvement in their condition, oftentimes a complete resolution of their condition. So that's true energy-guided medicine, quantum medicine, bioenergetic medicine. First, uh, first electrodermal screening systems that were computerized were in the 1970s, and there's a variety of, of systems that have been used since then. But this is this is a called a, a quantum lie detector. So you're not asking questions with your lips and, and measuring this uh, galvanic skin response on the skin, but you're asking questions by broadcasting frequencies into the body. And uh, when you when you broadcast those frequencies into the body, they distress the body then you know that that's not something good for that patient or it's something that's already distressing the patient. If it uh, reduces the stress, you know it's likely something would be beneficial for their health. If it's uh, no change, then, it's, then it would be okay to use as a therapy. 78-year-old man with, with shortness of breath on exertion, a rancher in West Texas, came for evaluation. When I did his electrodermal screening, glacial acetic acid came up as two, two and a half times greater than the next closest competitor toxin. And I thought, glacial acetic acid and the rancher, what is that about? And then it occurred to me that, that uh, vinegar is, has glacial acetic acid in it. So I asked him, do you use glacial acetic acid or vinegar? He said, oh, yeah, I'm on the kitchen floor every week with, with vinegar. I said, how long does it take you? Oh, an hour or two. I said, do you open the windows when you do that to aerate the house? He said, no. I said, well, stop that. <laughs> And so he stopped doing that, the shortness of breath went away. Now, I wouldn't have thought to ask a rancher about glacial acetic acid, would you? Okay, so it's, it's, it's what I call a guess improver. You know, this, this, this technology helps us to improve our guess. So the Arabic doctors say, if you want to get somebody well, go to their house. If they live in another state or another country, how practical is that? But we, with the electrodermal screening, you can virtually go to their house. You can learn things about them. I had a woman that was, that was allergic to chicken feathers. I said, do you have chicken feather pillows? No. Well, I don't understand why you're allergic to chickens. He said, I have one in my house. <laughs> <laughs> a chicken? Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought to ask that, would you? Okay. <laughs> okay, reversing cholangiocarcinoma. This is a 70-year-old woman who was orange and excruciating pain in her uh, upper abdomen. Uh, very nauseated, uh, vomiting fairly frequently, uh, itching severely from the bilirubin. Uh, she, 
I, ta I talked the, uh, the uh, gastroenterologist into putting a stent into her common bile duct. He said, well, why should I do that? I said, if this was your mother, would you want to try to give her some comfort in the last days of her life? He said, all right. <laughs> Okay, so so anyway, she got the stent in to, to relieve the liver uh, congestion a bit, and <clears throat> I put uh, put her on vegetable juices. And every vegetable juice she put either uh, uncaryotomatosa, cemento, which is a uh, Peruvian cat's claw, or noni. She alternated back and forth. So all day long she was sipping on vegetable juice with noni and, and uh, cemento. That's she really couldn't do anything else, but. Uh, these were all these were determined to be the best choices for her by electrodermal screening. Her symptoms resolved over the next two months. The repeat CAT scans showed no cancer, no other therapy. You know, so it sometimes does not have to be complicated. Diet and quantum physical energies and some herbs were enough for her. And there's some of the research on uh, uncaryotomatosa, the cemento, stimulates natural killer cells, uh, increases phagocytosis, causes apoptosis, pre-programmed -pre cell death of the cancer cells, reduces DNA damage, enhances uh, DNA repair, has an antimicrobial effect. So detoxification. Uh, if you don't, if you have a patient with cancer and you don't detoxify, then that is malpractice. Now, most doctors learn nothing about detoxification in medical school. I don't know if you know this, but infrared sauna is a very simple and a very effective detoxification process. You may not know this either. Uh, when, when they had the 9-11 first responders, all became ill because of all the stuff that they were getting into their body from that, uh, from that wreckage. And uh, those who went on infrared sauna several times a week are still alive today. Those who did not do any saunas are all dead now. Okay, so that so m many of them die from cancer and autoimmune diseases and one, a lot of other terrible stuff. But but the, but the sauna pulled the toxins out of those patients that were doing it regularly and helped them to help them to recover their health. Modified juice fasting very helpful for detoxification. Drinking water every 10 minutes. A lot of people drink a big glass of water in the morning, a big glass of water in the middle of the day, a big glass of water at the end of the day and call that hydration. Most of that just goes straight through your kidneys into the toilet and doesn't go into your cells and hydrate your cells and carry nutrients in and carry toxins out. So the best way to hydrate is two ounces of water every 10 minutes all day long. And then that will work. Uh, I use a quantum physical uh, uh, remedy in the water. So if you add, add some drops of the, uh, of the, of the uh, drainage remedies to the water, it makes it more effective. Oral clay, oral fiber, helps to bind toxins in the gut and carry them into the toilet so they don't get reabsorbed into the, into the uh, bloodstream and poison the organs some more. Lymphatic drainage, a chi machine. A chi machine is a box about the size of a toaster, has a, machine, has a motor downside, some cradles on top shaped like that, and if you turn the machine on and lay, lay down on the floor with your ankles up on those cradles, your, your body starts moving like a fish on the floor. Your ankles go side to side, your body starts moving like a fish. So you're getting rhythmic contraction relaxation of the, uh, of the skeletal muscles around the lymph vessels. So the skeletal muscles will be milking the lymph fluid back toward the central circulation. The most lymph congesting of all foods is dairy products. So if you want to get a patient well from cancer, don't give them dairy products of any type. Not goat dairy, not sheep dairy, not water buffalo, not uh, camel, not whatever that people migrate to when they get off the dairy, the cow dairy products. No dairy of any type. The second most lymph congesting of all foods are uh, wheat and gluten grains, high, high gluten grains. So get them off of all that, and the lymphatic system will work better. But but make sure they're doing something to move the lymphatics. Also, bouncing on a rebounder, uh, standing on a vibratory plate, doing a chi machine. If they don't have any money, have them lay down on their back on the bed, put their legs up in the air one at a time, and pretend that they're pedaling a one-pedal bicycle like this. Every time their knee goes out, their ankle goes out. Every time their knee comes back, their ankle comes back. That will contract and relax the skeletal muscles and milk the lymph fluid back toward the central circulation. When that leg gets tired, you put the other leg up and you do it for a bit. And then that one down and the other one. You do that about five minutes. That's a, that's a very good lymphatic exercise. It costs nothing. A little bit of time. 
a variety of photomagnetic lymph devices uh, can be very helpful in, in liquefying the lymph, and so it'll move back toward the central circulation. Dr. Silver is going to talk about that next, so I'm not going to steal his thunder. <laughs> uh, castor oil packs, uh, uh, coffee enemas can be helpful. Coffee enemas were in the Merck manual until the 1960s when a, when a drug was developed for treating nausea, and then it was mysteriously taken out of the Merck manual. Okay, coffee enemas, but very effective. When the coffee is absorbed through the rectal mucosa and gets into the hepatic portal circulation, first stop is the liver. In the liver, the coffee causes contraction of the bile ducts, dumps the toxins out of the bile ducts into the small intestine, and then the liver has, liver cells have a place to dump their toxins into the bile ducts then. So very, very effective. Liver gallbladder flush. Oh, visualization shouting. Uh, if a person goes by themselves someplace where they're not going to be disturbed and they're not going to disturb anyone else, closes their eyes, visualizes the face of the person, the, the first person that comes to mind that they need to shout at, and then shouts at them as if they're there, they can get a lot of negative uh, emotions out, not just anger, but other emotions as well that are entangled in the anger, and uh, in many cases improve their, their sur survival rate just by getting that out. I've never seen a patient with cancer who didn't have either outwardly directed anger or inwardly directed anger. They always have one or the other. And usually you have to get rid of both if you want to give the patient uh, well from cancer, but the visualization shouting is a very effective way. After they, after they shout, then they also forgive. You know, anger is an emotion. Unforgiveness is a spiritual issue. You need to resolve both. Infrared sauna, deal like baths, oil swish and spit, uh, warm baths with Epsom salt and baking soda, uh, laser inject detox, and some metal binders. Laser detox. Uh, this is a patient uh, that was uh, that had prostate cancer. Uh, several core biopsies proved the cancer was present. PSA was only a little elevated. Uh, refused prostatectomy, refused chemotherapy, radiation, or hormone manipulation, orchiectomy. Uh, Decided to modify his diet, uh, balance his saliva pH, take enzymes in between meals, took some herbs and vitamins and minerals that were guided by electrodermal screening, did some oral DMSA, uh, chlorella, to remove the, uh, the mercury. Already had his mercury amalgams taken out the wrong way, like Kelly. <laughs> uh, three months later, PSA was down to one. He had, he, he wanted to know that he, had, he no longer had prostate cancer. Energetically, he did not have cancer, but he said, I want to know. I said, okay, I can't stop you. So he went back to the doctor. They did 18 core biopsies, could not find a single cancer cell in all those cores. I don't know if you know this, but if you're 50 years old in the United States, you have a 50% chance, if in, a, in a man, you have a 50% chance of, of having cancer in situ in your prostate. If you're 70 years old, a 70% chance. If you're 90 years old, a 90% chance. So if you live long enough, you're going to have prostate cancer. But we also know this, that you're much more likely to die with the cancer than from the cancer unless you get involved with the urologist. Okay? Because the urologists stick a needle into the prostate, drag cancer cells from the prostate back through that tract, spread the cancer cells into the lymphatic system and eventually into the bone, and the patients die a, a very painful death. So don't do that to yourself. Okay. He had great energy, no impotence, no urinary incontinence, no stool incontinence. And those are the, the three most common adverse effects from, from the therapies that are done in, in a conventional medicine for prostate cancer is impotence and urinary and stool incontinence. Now enjoys his new diet and uh, is on only, only on a few maintenance nutrients now. He's been cancer-free for 14 years. It's a patient, really interesting patient uh, that came with multiple myeloma. When I did his initial energetic evaluation, it showed that, that petroleum was the number one cause of the condition. And she, he, this is a white collar worker. I said, have you, have you ever changed your oil? No, never, not, not in my life. Did you ever work in a garage? No. Have you ever been around petroleum? No. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Let's check your nutrients and see what, what, you know, what, uh, what, th what they look like. I didn't bring that. I, got a, uh, I left that at the hotel. I said, okay, come back tomorrow morning early, bring your suitcase over your nutrients in it. We'll check it. We, when he came back the next morning, I opened up the suitcase. The smell of Vicks Vaporub almost knocked me off the chair. I, I dug around in there, found the Vicks Vaporub. I said, read the first ingredient on that. He said, 
petrolatum. I said, that's petroleum. So when did you use that last this morning? How do you do it daily? How long have you been doing it? 50 years? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> I did a laser detox on him, and uh, he was completely uh, free of cancer in just a few months' time. Died several years later from, from heart disease without cancer. Oh, his bones look like Swiss cheese on an X-ray. You know, it took took a long time to heal those in, but but no cancer in the in the bones uh, after just a few months. Okay, some of you have seen this before, but those of you who haven't need to get this concept down. A person that's ill is like a bathtub full of dirty water, dirty water flowing over onto the bathroom floor. On the top of the bathtub are dirty water faucets on the left side that represent all these things. Uh, nutrient depleted foods, electromagnetic fields, radiation pollution, toxic relationships, toxic emotions, heavy metals, polluted air, antibiotics, pesticides, uh, biotoxins, allergens, and others. On the top, and you see those are all wide, those faucets are all wide open in most people that are chronically ill. And on the right side of the bathtub are clean water faucets that should be flowing clean water into the bathtub, but you see those are just dripping. They're not uh, flowing much clean water into the bathtub. And that's all these things. Uh, healthy foods and nutrients, purpose and will to live, sunshine and exercise, good relationships, peace, joy, and love, great attitude, restful sleep, pure water, fresh air. And at the bottom of the bathtub are drains that should be open, but in most people that are chronically ill, they're all clogged up. So that would include uh, constipation. If you're having less than, if you have, if you have less than uh, three bowel movements per day, that's constipation. So, probably if I ask, most of you would raise your hand, yes, I have constipation. <laughs> so, so how do you get your bowel function up? Take more magnesium, take more vitamin C, take more fiber, take more water, uh, take more exercise. But all those things will increase bowel function. If the, if the toxic stuff that's in your colon doesn't go into the toilet, it gets absorbed through the bowel wall into the hepatic portal circulation, goes straight to your liver, poisons first your liver, then overflows into your bloodstream, and then poisons your kidneys, your heart, your brain, your other vital organs. Not a good plan. Almost every patient that has cancer has uh, a toxic liver and kidneys, and almost all of them have severely clogged up lymphatic system because they have a love affair with dairy products and with wheat. And so you have to get them off of that because they're going to clog up their lymphatic system more if they don't do that. So the way you get a, someone well that has this situation going on with the dirty water flowing over onto the bathroom floor representing symptoms is to turn off the dirty water faucets as much as you can, open up the clean water faucets as much as you can, and then open up the drains at the bottom of the bathtub. So you can do that by drinking more water, taking homeopathic drainage remedies, herbs to detox, bowel, liver, kidney, uh, herbs, uh, infrared sauna, I mentioned, clay baths, clay plasters, fasting, modified fasting, I like the uh, vegetable fasting. A lot of people that do uh, uh, vegetable juice fasting do lots of carrot juice and lots of beet juice. That's loaded with sugar. Cancer loves sugar, not a good plan. Use uh, cucumber, uh, celery, uh, zucchini squash, yellow crookneck squash as your base, add some greens to it, add some ginger, some horseradish, some habanero, some lemon, some lime, some things that don't uh, turn into sugar. Okay, rebounding or rebounder, chi machine we talked about, photomatic lymph therapy, and then laser detox. So what is laser detox? This is a laser. Okay. This is a little piece of rubber tubing that I bought at the hardware store. This is a clear glass vial containing the homeopathic homophore of the toxins that are in the patient's body. If I shine that, oops, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. When I shine the laser through the vial, it changes to a line, doesn't it? Okay. Now, if there's a patient standing in front of that screen and I sweep that up and down, I'm carrying the information from this file into the patient. So we call that a sweeping process. We, uh, doc, I worked with uh, two PhDs back in 2001 to develop the technique and uh, refine it. And the results are quite remarkable, actually. It, it removes toxins from the body about 20 times faster than the next closest competitive, competitive technique that I've been able to discover. 
and it also helps to resolve what I call autoimmunity, energetic autoimmunity, and uh, even infections. In some cases, like viral infections are lessened by doing the laser detox. First patient that we did was a 45-year-old man with peripheral neuropathy. Uh, been washing carburetor parts in a barrel of gasoline with his bare hands for a protracted period of time. Uh, interject testing showed the gasoline was the culprit, so we made up a vial of the gasoline, homeopathic homocord, gave it to the technician, said go into that room, shine it on the patient in this way. The patient, the, the, the technician came out running out of the room after about a minute, said I can't stay in there any, any longer, the room smells of gasoline. Uh, the patient came out soon after that and said, you really need to get an exhaust fan in there. <laughs> I uh, went in and sure enough, we had to keep the room closed off the rest of the day because the smell of gasoline was so strong. From just that energetic interaction, he was releasing gasoline through his skin, through his lungs, into the air. But he re the neuropathy improved markedly just with that one minute treatment. So you know, Dr. Pop in, in Germany figured out probably why that works with some of his research. And that's in your notes. So go back and look at that later. This is a patient with Parkinson's disease who, uh, 60 years old, had tremors, uh, you know, removed her dental amalgams. Uh, when we checked her energetically, the number one cause of the, of the tremors was mercury, so we did a laser detox for mercury. Had a 50% improvement in the tremor just with that one treatment. She was so excited, she borrowed money to come back for the second treatment for DDT. And when we did that, she had a further reduction in the tremors. She, I followed her up for about another year, and uh, during that year, she did not get the tremors back. So. It was not just a short-term effect, it was a, a longer-lasting effect. I've seen patients with severe insomnia that, uh, that were drug-resistant, uh, have ability to go back to sleep and sleep all night long just with one laser detox treatment. This is one of those. But she had serotonin and melatonin, uh, sorry, serotonin and GABA, being affected by two pesticides. And so when we treat the, treated the two pesticides and the serotonin GABA, she was able to sleep. This is a woman that had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, severely swollen, severely swollen liver on the right side, severely swollen spleen on the left side. They were touching the, the, the pelvic bones down here, so they're massively swollen, it's excruciating pain from the swelling of the capsules. I, I had the idea that if I could get her pathology slides from the hospital and make up a homeopathic homocord and use that with a, with a light, that I could help her. So we did that, and because uh, I didn't know what else to do, she was you know so, so in such bad shape. The doctors expect her to live less than two months. So, on um, almost yeah. So the oncologist uh, didn't expect her to live. I made uh, homeopathic homocord, shine shine the light through the vial onto the patient. And within uh, within a couple of weeks, the pain was gone, and the liver and spleen came back down to normal size. She lived uh, four more years. I moved off to another state and lost her to follow up. So my time is up, but I just wanted to get the message across that uh, that there is a way to help patients if you have a, a broad enough approach. If you have just one tool in your toolbox or three tools in your toolbox, like allopathic doctors do, then your chance of helping the patient is not very great. But if you learn enough tools and you put them together in the right way, sometimes you can get miraculous things. So thank you.